And Steve White has our first question. Mr White. How will spending £40 billion on HS2 benefit taxpayers in rural communities such as Cornwall? Rural communities such as Cornwall. HS2, which has been at its initial stages of financing, agreed today. Chris Bryant. I don't suppose it will directly. But I think we've got to look bigger. We've got to look at what it does for the whole of the country. Because if there's one thing that I think is wrong about the economy in this country, it is that it is far too focused on London and the south-east of England. We need to stretch that economic prosperity. If there is going to be growth now, or is it far too late and all the rest of it, but if there is going to be growth now, it's got to stretch beyond that tiny little patch of London and the south-east. Apart from anything else, in the interest of the people who live in London and the South East, because in areas like here or in my constituency in South Wales in the Rhondda, where you have literally dozens of people applying for a job, there aren't jobs to go to, and people are being encouraged to move to places where there are jobs, but they can't afford to live there because the house, price, house prices in London and the South East are going through the roof. So my argument is HS2, I really want it to happen. I want to shrink the country, but it can't just be spend 42 million uh, and uh, billion rather and give a, a, a blank check i worry that 14 billion pounds of that a third of the money is actually the contingency so i think we've been absolutely right to say there's no blank check here we've got to push down on the figures and we've got to make sure this isn't just a train um, a, a big great big train set for ministers to play with it's actually about transforming the economy of this country Matthew Hancock, is there evidence, uh, apparently there is, in the Transport Department that HS2 will actually take jobs from places like Cornwall, rural parts of Britain, because they'll go to the narrow channel that HS2 creates north and south in the country? No, because HS2 is part of a national infrastructure plan. Um, I agree with what a lot of what Chris said and in fact I welcome the passion with which he said it because HS2 is important but it's important of, as part of a larger plan um, for those who worry like here in Snostel that we uh, aren't investing in other places around the country HS2 will only take uh, about a quarter just under a quarter of the budget uh, for transport and it connects our biggest cities um, but that means that three quarters of the spending is available on transport for everywhere else in the country. For instance, there's upgrades happening on the line from here to London and in my constituency in West Suffolk and elsewhere around the country. So we've got to make sure that we sort out this long-term problem that there hasn't been enough infrastructure. And HS2 is part of that, but only as part of a national plan that makes sure everywhere is better connected. Can you clarify one thing? Is it coming straight out of the pocket of the taxpayer or is most of this money actually going to be met by government bonds being issued? In other words, that the actual damage to the Exchequer is much less than would appear at first sight? Well, has the, this been decided? The amount that is paid for by the taxpayer obviously has to be raised and ultimately, even if it's borrowed, it has to be paid for. You know, one of the things we've learnt over the last few years is you can't just borrow on the never-never as a country. Uh, but of course, part of it will be paid for also by people paying to go on the line once it's completed. That's my point. So that it won't necessarily come straight out, all 42 billion, of these people's pockets. It'll uh, be paid for by future profits. Is that the plan? Because part if, of it, if that is the plan, why haven't you made that clear? Because it would change the argument. Well, part of it will be paid for by... Um, by people who are by the passengers, but part of it is about spending infrastructure spending. Right. But it's got to be part of increasing spending on infrastructure to improve our infrastructure to every part of the country. Okay, man in the second row from the back there. Blue. Are you going to privatise it? <laughs> well, eventually. <laughs> It will be built as part by an awful lot of companies and the state. So, you know, in a sense, how, how do you build th things in this country? You get people in to build them. The Olympics were built by hundreds of private companies, employing people locally, employing people all around Britain. So, you know, that's, we've got to make sure that it's built in the most cost-effective manner possible. Harriet Sargent. 
Well, I think the gentleman who asked this question originally asked exactly the right question. Um, and I think that the HS2, unfortunately, is an example of, of what is going wrong um, today in politics. I mean, for a start, um, was the lack of transparency that the report that, that came out, um, and it was only through um, um, a, a special, you know, asking a special investigation that we actually found out that the government had suppressed the information that there are 50 areas in the country which are not, not just not going to benefit from HS2, but are actually uh, going to be worse off. And one of those is Cornwall. And in fact, the Cornish economy is going to be £20 million worse off. So, you know, this is, again, just something that seems to be benefiting London businessmen so that they can get somewhere quicker. Jeremy Brown, as a, as a West Country MP, do you concur with what Harriet said? No, I take completely the opposite view. I don't um, think it will benefit everywhere in the country equally, but then no infrastructure ever does. Unless the train goes to absolutely every town in the country, it's obviously going to have a disproportionate benefit. But then so does duelling the A30 in Cornwall have a disproportionate benefit for people in this area. But the reason I support uh, HS2 is because I think it is absolutely crucial to our future economic prosperity as a country that we have a massive uplift in our infrastructure and our ability to transport uh, people, goods and services uh, to market and between cities faster than we do at the moment. And let me make very two quick points. One is an historical point. There were lots of naysayers when Brunel built the first tunnel under the Thames and people saying, well, you know, we've managed perfectly well with boats for hundreds of years. This is all a waste of money. It's a vanity project. No doubt when the M1 was built, said, oh, you know, there's lots of people protesting. But if we didn't have a motorway network, our country would be in a much worse position than it is in terms of uh, our society, but also our economy. And my second is a global point. If you go to countries like China, what is very striking is the massive, massive infrastructure investment that is happening in airports, in high-speed rail, in motorway capacity. Now, they're either doing that because they're stupid and they have a wish to waste their money, or possibly, and my view is this, they're doing it because they realise that in order to be globally competitive, they need to have a modern infrastructure. And a lot of our infrastructure dates back from the Victorian era, and I want us to have a can-do spirit in this country, <laughs> not a can't-do spirit, and make sure that we have infrastructure fit for the next 100 years. Very brief. Yeah. <laughs> Jeremy, very briefly, yes, did, you, ask... did you accept the figure that Harriet used, which was KPMG accountants, FOI, Freedom of Information... Mm from the department that Cornwall will be £20 million pounds worse off. I think those, is, that, is that wrong? I think those figures are uh, hard to, to quantify. I think that to right. a degree they're plucked from the air. Okay. But I think it's in the national... If we're a more prosperous country, we will raise more revenue to pay for public services in Cornwall and everywhere else the, in the country. The woman up there on the right in green. The woman there on the right, please. We're not arguing against HS2. What we're saying is there isn't enough infrastructure across the rest of the country. Absolutely. And maybe the priority now needs to be not HS2, but other places that haven't got any infrastructure yeah. in place. Can, can I, yeah. uh, Paris Lee. Absolutely. Um, I'm a Nottingham girl, and actually, Harriet, it's not just going to benefit mm. London businessmen. Um, I think I read in the paper today that it's going to boost the economy of Nottingham by 5%, and I think that what the lady said is quite right. We should be doing that all over the country. And actually, uh, the French have had high-speed rail since, yes. since before I was born. They've been travelling at 200 miles per hour since 1981. I'm surprised they're not all dizzy. And I just think, <laughs> why can't we do that in this country? You know, so it's not about can we do HS2? Of course, we can do anything if we put our mind to it. Let's do it properly and let's get it around the rest of the country as but well. Can we... oh. Sorry, can I just say briefly, just to follow on, that what's embarrassing is how long we took to get HS1 to happen. So in France, you were going at 200 miles an hour from Paris to the tunnel, while 160 miles an hour under the tunnel and then 30 miles an hour in Britain. But of Chris, course, you've got Chris, to transfer, but, transform all of but that. But Chris, in order to make sure that these things actually happen, given that they t it's going to take a long time to build, We've got to make sure, if you believe it, that major parties stay on side as well as for infrastructure to everywhere else. 
you know, passenger numbers are already at capacity. They're set to double. Yeah, no, I agree. Are, you, are you complaining about so Labour's what, position? So, so why aren't Labour more... making a part of a little... No, of I'm not making a part of it. But if Labor's we're going to build infrastructure, we need parties who say they support it actually to get out there and support it. Well, well actually, vote for it. do you, well, believe, do you believe Labour supports it or not? Well, I certainly hope so, but there have been no, a lot... Do you believe so? No, there have been a lot They're of wobbles. They're playing games. They're playing games. Can, no. well, you well, it's, it's, good, it's good to hear games, the... Because you're the, making it a party political no, but it, thing. Do you uh, think no, it's Labour a good idea or you don't? Has that got to do with political ideology? Let me... Just, look, two people have now asked me... <laughs> two people have now asked me um, what, what the Labour position is. I thought I expressed it right at the beginning, which is we are in favour of it, but it's not a blank cheque. We, we've got to have financial discipline on big things like these. We can't spend £42 billion on one project without considering all the other parts of the country that might need electrification and so on. So, of course, we are in favour. And, Matthew, you said, why don't we vote for it? Labour MPs this afternoon in the House of Commons voted for it. Those that were there. The, well, no, I wasn't, because I was on my way here. Yeah, well, no, there weren't very many. There weren't right. very... Right, now, I want There's to hear... 350. Fine. Not I your won't... leader and not your shadow chancellor, which is a bit but of a... But isn't this exactly blow. what's now become wrong with this HS2? I mean, we're two years away from an election, and suddenly it's become a political football. So, you know, we have... Um, Labour want to show uh, the sort of voters in the South that actually they're, go they're good with money. So then they're suddenly becoming very careful with money. And, uh, the, you know, the Conservatives are desperate to woo voters in the North, uh, so they are pushing for this train. I mean, wh why aren't we given a little bit more choice? If you have a large sum of money and you're trying to improve your life, surely you make a list of things that you possibly could spend it on. Why are we just being told this one thing? I want to bring in... I want to bring in just, just two or three members of the audience on the point that was raised about places that aren't directly in line with HS2, and then we'll go on to the next question. Yes, you. Um, yeah, just to say, uh, Mr Brown, uh, I distinctly remember reading in the Liberal Democrats' last manifesto at the last general election um, that the Lib Dems were going to reopen disused rail lines that were closed down in the beach acts in the 60s. We don't need HS2 because we've got disused rail lines down here in Cornwall in rural areas like Harwich, St Day, that need to be reopened so that it gets people off the roads and away from using cars and using public transport, because I use public transport every day. It's late, it's expensive. God knows how much it costs a taxpayer paying for student uh, rail cards and bus passes. But you need to reopen this, these disused rail lines, especially down here in other areas of the country, rather than spending billions of pounds of taxpayers' money on HS2 when you could just reopen the Victorian um, infrastructure that was used back then. Thank you. <laughs> and you, sir, there. Yes, I think, just briefly, I think it's just another example of state-sponsored capitalism. And I, I think it's crony capitalism. And I think it's a folly. OK. And you, sir, in the front here. And I'll take one more.